Hello, welcome back to the course on other single processing for music applications. In the previous programming uh, lecture, we talked about uh, the HPR model, the harmonic plus residual model. That was uh, the idea of modeling a sound with a harmonic and a residual component, and we talked about the implementation in the SMS tools package. Now we want to go a step further and talk about the HPS model, the harmonics plus stochastic model. So now we are modeling the residual that we obtain with the stochastic modeling approach. So we obtain a harmonic and a stochastic representation of a particular sound. So the diagram, the block diagram is uh, very similar. The, the whole thing uh, for the analysis is the same until we obtain the residual spectrum of X, no? X uh, XR of K, and then instead of just going and summing it with a harmonic component, what we are doing is approximating it with a stochastic approximation, so by smoothing the magnitude spectrum, and then the synthesis is done by generating random numbers for the phase and uh, combining it with a, a sort of an interpolated version of this approximation so that we generate a complete spectrum and this uh, stochastic spectrum can then be added back to the harmonic component. The, the great advantage of uh, this uh, stochastic approximation is that now uh, we are more flexible. We can uh, do many more things on this representation apart from being much more compact. See, this stochastic uh, approximation reduces the, the amount of information that is required to uh, reconstruct the signal. So apart from being uh, a compact representation, it's uh, more flexible and we'll be able to do uh, quite a few things with that. So let's start from the same code that we uh, looked at uh, last, uh, in the last lecture, which uh, was this code in which, uh, well, now I changed the, the sound, uh, now I use a flute sound, but basically it performs the harmonic analysis by taking FFT and the, the detecting the F F0, so it performs the harmonic analysis uh, steps and then it synthesizes those harmonics and it subtracts them from the original signal. It recomputes the a spectrum of the original signal with the same window uh, size and type than the one that is in the in the this uh, generated uh, sinusoidal spectrum. So we need to multiply by a blackman harris window and uh, we need to choose the, the window size that was uh, the same then was used for uh, the sinusoidal synthesis. And we can then subtract the harmonics from the original signal and obtain the residual. And now in this uh, lecture, uh, basically we focus on the stochastic approximation of this residual. And these, are, these three lines are doing that. So the first is we are converting it to uh, a dB uh, uh, scale, so we are converting half of the magnitude spectrum to a uh, dB uh, scale and we obtain a new uh, magnitude spectrum. And then we call this function called resample with uh, this uh, magnitude spectrum and uh, of course with values that are above a certain uh, threshold. And we are converting it to a shorter array uh, and uh, the size of this new array is uh, the, the size that we started from multiplied by a stock F. And a stock F is our stochastic factor approximation, basically is our smoothing approximation or, or down sampling factor. So basically it means that uh, the output array will be 40% uh, of the original spectrum. And then uh, we are uh, up sampling again to the size that we started with in order that then we can do the resynthesis. Um, so in fact resample can be uh, used both for down sampling uh, uh, and for up sampling. And it uses the DFT approach. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So we can go to uh, the documentation on the resample uh, function within uh, SciPy. Okay. 
So this is the, the documentation. So it uh, takes an array, it takes the size of the output array, so either less or more, so you can downsample or upsample. And well, there is some optional arguments also that uh, allow us to uh, give a particular window or to give a more uh, multidimensional array and, and process only part of that. And uh, since Python, of course, is all open source, we can also see the source code of this, uh, this function. And as I said, well, a resample is, uh, uses a uh, Fourier-based approach to do uh, downsampling and upsampling. And uh, what it does, it, it performs first the, the FFT of the input signal. Then it will basically cut the spectrum or append samples, depending if it's upsample or, or uh, downsampling or upsampling. Uh, and then once we have recomputed uh, a, a longer or a shorter spectrum by cutting or appending zeros, we perform the inverse FFT. That's a quite straightforward, simple way of performing uh, interpolation or uh, downsampling uh, or upsampling. Okay, so we go back here. So this. Uh, uh, re uh, returning the for the first resample, we will return less samples, and then afterwards we will uh, convert it to this upsample version that will be a smooth version of the spectrum we started with. Let's let's run this so we can see how that works. So let's run test four. Okay, and now we can plot the original spectrum, so MXR is already the dB uh, version of the spectrum and half of it. Okay, so this is our residual spectrum. And then if we plot on top of that the, the stock M, that's of the same size but a smooth version because it's the result of having first downsample and then upsample with uh, interpolation. Okay, so as you see, uh, it's, we are very much, in fact, if we zoom in into any of these regions, uh, we see that the uh, green line is the, the smooth version, but is, uh, it of course, is, is, uh, is smoother than the original one, but it follows quite, uh, quite well the original signal. So let's change the stochastic factor of 0.4 and let's put maybe 0.1. Okay, so then that will be a stronger smoothing factor. And if we save these and then we compute it, okay, now we plot again the, the original uh, residual spectrum and now let's plot the smooth envelope. Okay, and this clearly shows the smooth envelope on top of that and it's much smoother than uh, before. Okay, so that's basically what the stochastic approximation does and if we now go into the HPS model code of the, of the SMS tools, well, we'll see the analysis function, the synthesis function, and also one function that does analysis and synthesis at the frame level. And um, the analysis, for example, is uh, basically the same than for the HPR model. We only add one input parameter, which is this stock F, the, the factor, the smoothing factor. And then in the analysis, we first perform the harmonic analysis. Then we subtract the sinusoids from uh, the original signal to obtain the residual, and then we run the stochastic model anal, the one that we already uh, discussed when we talked about the stochastic model. So we just, uh, the stochastic model receives the uh, signal, the residual signal, and uh, it has the hop size, the same hop size that we are using. And now the, the window size that we use for the stochastic approximation is just twice the hop size. So in fact, the, the stochastic approximation does not require big windows. In fact, it's all the other, the, the, the other way around. The smaller, the better, so we can capture 
time information, the, the stochastic components, the residual components, the time information, the attacks of the nodes, etc., are uh, most critical. So the smaller the window, the better. So in fact, if H uh, many times is by default like 128 samples, here we are using windows of 256 samples. So we will be computing an FFT of 256 uh, samples and approximating that. Okay? And of course then we return the harmonics and instead of returning the residual, we return these envelopes, this sequence of envelopes uh, that uh, we are uh, computing. And in the synthesis part, well, it's a, in a, it's a similar situation. We synthesize the sinusoids and then synthesize the stochastic component using the stochastic model synth that also we talked about. So from these uh, envelopes, we can synthesize uh, the stochastic component. And the function that uh, puts it all together, there is this HPS model function that uh, includes analysis and synthesis using the harmonic plus stochastic model. So uh, it has some parameters, uh, default parameters, and then it performs the analysis and it performs the synthesis and in the, in the in the process, it plots certain uh, yeah, intermediate uh, values. Okay, so let's uh, go to the terminal, and now instead of running the, the code, or running the, the, um, the code by calling the, the file, we can also run the function directly, and that allows us to be able to change the parameters. So if we import this function, the HPS uh, model, function, okay, now we have imported, we haven't executed it. Now, oh, well, we better to just import it with a given name, for example, HPS, okay, and now we can call HPS and the function within HPS, so within this file, there is this function main, so we can just call main, and here now we will be able to change the values of these parameters. So let's just get the values by, uh, uh, by default. Okay, so this uh, computes um, this analysis and synthesis of this um, sound, of this uh, sax phrase with the default parameters. And now if we can, we can play around, so of course we could use the, the interface that uh, we have been showing in the demo classes, but here it may be uh, m sort of more, um, more intuitive in terms of understanding what is going on and being able to go deep into the code to just uh, replace parameters here. So for example, now if uh, I want to change the threshold and uh, make it uh, a smaller uh, uh, threshold instead of minus 100, let's put minus uh, 40, uh, then uh, we will um, run the same code but changing the threshold. And of course, changing the threshold has meant that it found only few harmonics. In fact, it considered everything stochastic and in here the, the, the stochastic representation is the one that is more prominent. Okay. Um, and you can change any parameter. Uh, you can change the, the sound, for example, okay, let's, uh, we, can, we can change the, the sound file or we can change the, the minimum uh, duration of the, of the harmonics, etc., etc. So no need to, uh, to explain that anymore. Basically, uh, we can just execute it in any way we want. Okay, and that's uh, all I wanted to say. So this is uh, basically... Uh, an extension of the harmonic plus residual model and uh, we have uh, seen how it works. Uh, so basically this is the, the, the most complex model that uh, we're going to see in this course. Um, and all the others uh, can be uh, understood as uh, kind of uh, related uh, with, uh, with this one. So if you understand this model, uh, I think it's a, it's a good way to understand a lot of the things we, we have been talking about. So that's all for, uh, for today, uh, so I hope to see you uh, next lecture. Thank you.